Maybe. All right. We're here. Welcome to the Saturday morning leading LDS webinar. These are becoming more and more fun. Uh, today, we're talking about a very uh, practical topic. You know, we've had, we've had topics, like we've talked about addiction, we've talked about uh, uh, shame, we've had, uh, we've talked about, you know, other practical um, apps like how to use Asana in meetings and other tools like that. And uh, I love doing some of these more practical ones because we sort of get caught up in our day-to-day -day, uh, calling and, uh, or our week-to-week -week calling, and we don't really sit down and figure out, now, how is it that I actually go about this? I'm supposed to take minutes in meetings, but, but how do I do that? And so uh, we're, we're uh, going to jump into that, but I want to maybe alert you to some, let's see, my uh, Facebook's going to start talking at me unless I stop them. All right. This uh, Facebook looks a bit odd. I hope it's working. Um, apps like how to use a there I am. Stop it. Holy smokes. I don't know if you're watching on Facebook, but it looks like a I'm in a snowstorm. And, uh, I love doing some of these more practical. Mute. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, looks like David DeFord, you're watching through Facebook, so um, it it looks like uh, I'm in a green swamp, but uh, hopefully it's capturing that. I will come back and check on that. I think it may be that I'm recording to the cloud, but I don't know. I don't know. All right, um, but I wanted to mention that uh, next week I'm trying to get in line that I am been in contact with a company called Melissa Data, and they have a um, a tool called Listware, and I used it when I was bishop to clean up records, and you can do it uh, for less than like 15 bucks of the ward budget instead of sending out a bunch of letters and seeing which ones return. shows you just a, a quick way to clean up uh, records uh, in, in your ward or whatever it is. So um, that I'm hoping to get a representative from Melissa Data to come and sort of walk us through that, but that'll be another good one. So stay tuned for next week as, as we do that. Um, cool. So uh, David is here uh, and, and Nate, you look like you're looking at uh, Facebook. I just want to confirm, does it look, maybe I need to refresh my page here because it looks uh, awful on my end. I just want to fix that before we jump into it here. Reloading. Let's see. Okay. Maybe it's working. Okay, here we are, here we are. All right, Jenny, let's introduce you. How are you, Jenny? I'm well, how are you, Kurt? Good, now where, where is it that you're in Virginia? I am. In, in a, on a farm. That's, That's correct. <laughs> Mormons so do live on farms in Virginia, yes. Nice, nice, it does happen, interesting. It does, it does. So tell us, uh, what, what do we need to know about you, your background and uh, maybe what brings you here today and to, to talk about taking minutes in a meeting? Well, I am like everybody else who I think is here uh, watching today, and I've sat through a few miserable church meetings. Um, we all have, yes. Yes, they're, they can be interminable. Um, I have been a young women's secretary several times. I've been a Relief Society secretary. I've been on the ward council in varying capacities as a Relief Society president and as a young women's president currently, and also as an activities committee chairperson. And um, I did not understand myself how um, the meetings really should run. <laughs> I've been in a lot of meetings, but I didn't know how they could run smoothly until I was asked to um, be the secretary of one of our local nonprofit organizations, the Potomac Heritage Foundation. And um, as part of my work with the nonprofit, I took several training courses through the, that were offered through the state about how to, uh, how to take minutes. Um, because in the Commonwealth of Virginia, 
minutes are the, the official record for a nonprofit organization. And um, if the minutes are kept improperly, then you can be audited. There can be all kinds of, of trouble with the nonprofit. And as again, as a result of that training, and then as my work as a secretary for, the, for our local DAR chapter, I learned several things about how to take minutes, how to make an agenda, um, things that I was never trained to do in the church, but that, um, that we do constantly in the church, but um, there are ways for us to, uh, to better run meetings. So we can run meetings that are not miserable. Really, we can. <laughs> it's possible people it's actually true. do that. It's no, true. I think, I uh, you know, there's, there's obviously many things that go into a, a, a successful meeting, but, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is, is as you leave that meeting, it's one thing to have a really good meeting, but it's another thing to have it show progress or um, have it actually work, right? Um, exactly. Rather than just being another, you know, feel good Sunday school class or have another feel good discussion, but to really have progress there. And um, so that's what we'll get into. I know you have a, um, a slideshow. If you want to jump into that, I don't want to lead you along with, you know, I'm so accustomed to just throwing questions at people. But uh, why don't we jump into your, your presentation and, and I'll probably throw questions out at you as we go. And also those that are attending, we have uh, a good number of people in the, the Zoom that are watching and attending. Um, and so as you, uh, those that are they're watching, just put questions in there. I'll keep my eye on it and we'll come back to these as, as we have a good uh, point to, to review some questions and we'll make sure, and Jenny can see them as well. So, um, uh, but we'll make sure those get asked. And then if you're watching via Facebook, um, we will also uh, be looking for the comments there. So if you have a comment, uh, just put it in there and we'll be sure to pass along to Jenny so that uh, we can get every, every T crossed and every I dotted. So, um, so I, I love the, the title of your, of your presentation. Um, <laughs> That's right. I think that we do have a lot of meetings that are time suck, or at least I've sat through a lot of meetings that are time suck. Um, just like you were just saying, Kurt, you know, discussion occurs during our meetings, but no assignments are made. We don't have any follow up from the last meeting. We spend too much time talking about missionary efforts or the calendar. Um, a lot of times we attend church meetings that don't have an agenda or the agenda doesn't have a set time for how long you want to spend on a topic. Um, the discussion can rehash what was covered in an earlier meeting for those who were absent or who weren't paying attention or who weren't taking notes. And so you spend a lot of time going back over information that was covered in a previous meeting. But um, minutes can really help with that. Now, um, if you're taking proper minutes, um, they can help limit eliminate frustration, make your meetings more effective and an efficient use of time. Um, Cause we don't want them to be a, si a time suck. We don't want to feel like, <laughs> like we're living in the princess bride where we're in a torture session where we've had a year of our lives sucked away. Um, that's not the goal of our minutes, but I think a lot of people have not actually seen minutes. Um, and so they don't understand what, proper minutes can do and how they can help guide your meeting and make them more effective. So to start out this presentation, I'm going to show you here some minutes that I took from a recent uh, Bishop's Youth Committee meeting. Um, if you've attended BYC, you know that there's not a secretary assigned to BYC. Um, so in this case, I'm the Young Women's President, and so I act as the secretary during BYC. Um, so I hope you can tell right away that these minutes look slightly different than notes. You'll notice that um, they include some administrative minutia over here. Um, they, the minutes include what time your meeting began, who was presiding, who was conducting. We sang a song during BYC. Um, during this particular meeting, we did not have a leadership training because uh, we knew this meeting was gonna go long, so we cut out um, that portion of the meeting. Uh, we have a record here of who had the opening prayer, who gave the closing prayer, what time we adjourned, and when our next meeting is. All of those are key um, parts of minutes. And then also we have here a record of who attended the meeting and which organization they represented. Um, we were reorganizing the teachers and the deacons, so there's no teachers and deacons. But um, you can see, as I said, right away um, that these look different than your typical informal notes. 
Now, the BYC has three main purposes. A BYC meeting um, is intended to meet needs, to plan upcoming activities, and evaluate previous activities. So for minutes purposes, those three purposes of our meeting are our three main headers. Um, you can see here for meeting needs that everyone was assigned to read the information at safety.lds.org and implement that in our activity planning. Kyle had an assignment. Sister S had an assignment. Sister S had an assignment. Um, those things are documented in the minutes because they were actions. We, you notice that the discussion is not described in these minutes, okay? But the assignment is recorded so that when we meet again, when we met in September, we could look at this and follow up. Did Kyle uh, complete his assignments? Did Sister S complete her assignments? Did everyone read safety.lds.org and implement that in our activity planning? It's part of the return and report principle that we're taught in the temple, right? And so this is done at the, at the beginning of the next meeting, right? That's right. We follow, these assignments are made during the meeting, um, but at the beginning of the following meeting, we'll take these things and use them as part of our agenda. Um, we'll, we'll go over previous notes um, as, part of our, as part of our following meeting. Um, also during that particular BYC meeting, we plan some upcoming events. And so what's recorded in the notes is not all the discussion. Well, we talked about a different activity. You know, we don't, we don't record those things. We just record the decisions that were made. Um, so in this case, everyone was um, assigned to come with uh, ideas for, for this past month's uh, activity. Um, we planned a back to school activity. Here's the, the pertinent information about that activity. And here down below are the assignments. Um, these three individuals, Sydney, Kyle, and Marin were assigning speakers. Um, Sydney, Nicole, and Marin were bringing food. It was back to school, so they're bringing Smarties and Dum Dums, right? It nice. makes it easy when everybody has um, a list of the assignments in front of them. It makes it easy for leaders to follow up. It makes it easy for the youth to not forget that they had an assignment. Um, taking, these, taking a record of this type helps keep everybody organized. Now, again, this... this um, particular BYC went really long. We had previously formed a committee to help us uh, fix our mutual opening exercises, which are kind of a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a variety of problems. And so we had organized a committee um, and that committee came and gave their report to us on what problems they observed during opening exercises and how they could fix it. Um, and so we discussed those problems and listed some solutions. So, so this noted was in the a youth committee that you had. That's right. It was a oh, committee cool. made up of an adult leader um, and several youth who basically critiqued our uh, disastrous mutual <laughs> exercises. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was it was pretty humorous. And so this discussion went well over an hour. The discussion on on how to fix mutual opening exercises went probably seventy five minutes. Wow. Um, but. But you can see from the minutes that all that's recorded is, hey, we had a problem, here's the solution. You don't have the 45 minutes of, yeah. I, I, I kid you not, I do not know why we could not pick the room that we were gonna hold <laughs> opening <laughs> exercises, but that took a lot of discussion. But all that's recorded is, and, and in fact, we switched it three times after I wrote the minutes, I have it crossed out, three times we switched the room. Um, we're crowded for space where we were meeting in the young women's room, the multipurpose room, so we moved to the Relief Society room. That's recorded. What setup is required? Um, we have as you're taking, Sergeant, as you're taking these notes, are you doing it uh, just with pen and paper, or do you, are you typing these things in on on the laptop? I'd imagine either or works. I've done it both ways. I have um, when I took notes for the the Daughters of the American Revolution. There were very specific um, types of topics that we covered and in a certain order. So I just had a template and I would just fill in the blanks. Hmm. Um, for BYC, um, when I do BYC, because I'm the young women's president, I actually take notes. So I take extremely detailed notes that include the discussion and then I write the minutes based on my notes. Um, when I've been acting as a secretary for the Potomac Heritage Foundation, I took um, notes strictly um, for the purposes of the public, um, for public use. So I did not include any discussion. I only included, you know, here, here was a, um, 
here was a proposal, we seconded it, here's a discussion, we tabled it for the next meeting, that, that sort of thing. So I've done it a variety of different ways and I've done it by typing into a laptop um, and I've done it by hand. I find in the BYC, in church meetings, it's easier for me to take it by hand. Um, but in my capacity in other meetings uh, in a community, I found it's easier to type. So it, it, it's kind of a matter of preference and what's, the, what's gonna be distracting in your meeting. If it's gonna be distracting that you're typing, um, that don't, I would say don't do that during a church meeting. Yeah. yeah. And I guess it, to me, it sounds like it all goes back to whether you're doing it uh, by hand or with a, with a computer that the t having a template is, is what's key. Right. And then that's sort of going to guide you just kind of filling in the, the different uh, spaces. Um, well, it depends on your template is really your agenda, right? Um, the yeah. two work hand in hand. We really, maybe we should do another presentation on how to make the agenda work with minutes. Hmm. Um, we're talking just today about, about taking minutes, what they look like, why you need okay. them, um, how you can use them. But your agenda um, will determine what information is in your meeting, in your minutes. In the, BY, in the case of BYC, we have three topics, right? We have um, planning activities, meeting needs, and evaluating past activities. In this case, evaluating past activities was, how can we fix mutual opening exercises? Um, that may not always be the case. Um, and so it had a slightly different header under, under the, our minutes. Usually our minutes fit on one sheet. In this, time, in this case, they fit on two, two pages. Um, and then everybody's provided a copy of these minutes at the next meeting, if that makes sense, right? But yeah. your template is based on your agenda. And so you need a meeting agenda in order to stay organized enough to take better minutes and your minutes will inform your agenda for the next meeting, which will make your next meeting run better as well. Do you, do you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They work hand in hand. Exactly. Exactly. So again, um, wrapping up these minutes, um, at the end of our BYC meetings, we have the adults make closing remarks. I did not make any this time. Um, but Brother N and the Bishop made some remarks, um, which are which we record in brief, just so that someone who, um, for example, the, the deacons and the teachers were not present at this meeting. Um, when they come back, they'll see these minutes and they can understand what's happening in the meeting. Yeah, and I think right. that's a good, good, uh, and maybe you'll hit on that more, but uh, as far as the purpose of these minutes, one of the big purposes is that those that did not attend the meeting can maybe review the minutes later and feel like, okay, I've gotten the main points of, of what was discussed and the main action items from that meeting, even though I wasn't there. Exactly. I think um, sometimes you might be distracted. You may have sent a sub in. You, something may have come up and you're not able to attend a meeting. Um, you may have been present for part of the meeting. You may have been having a sidebar conversation. I know that never happens in your meetings. Um, <laughs> but something may have happened that was preventing you from, um, oh, I went the wrong way. Which way do I go? <laughs> How do I back it up? <laughs> Is it lighting you? Here, let me back up. I can do okay. it this way. <laughs> I went too far. But um, you may have an error. You may have a... Um, there's lots of reasons that you may need a reminder. It may have been a month between your last meeting and our ward council has just changed from, uh, from doing twice a month ward council meetings to once monthly ward council meetings. So it's a lot of times it's been, there's been some time between our previous meetings and um, it's really helpful uh, to have a reminder of what you discussed so that you're refreshed and ready for the next meeting. So you can see from the example that I just gave you and from our discussion just now, that minutes will remind you of what was covered during the previous meeting. They help members to return and report. In other words, you can, you can get accountability without scolding someone, right? If I hand a copy of these minutes to the youth, usually you have a much longer list of youth assignments. Um, the you youth know, sees me, his name and he- stop you for, real quick. On your sure. screen, do you see the, um, some of your, the slides contents being covered up? You see the pictures of me and you? I do. I think you can click and drag that. Oh, it won't move here. Let's try oh. this. <laughs> yeah, see, I tried to do that earlier. Let's try oh, this. Yeah, it doesn't want to move for me. So if you go <laughs> up, uh, put your mouse up by the top of the screen, and I think a menu appears when you do that. Like up at the top center. Oh. Top center, right here. Yeah, you see how that drops down? And then if you do... Um, 
just trying to think here. Um, and you just, you just have one, you're just using one monitor, right? That's right. Uh -huh. okay. If you share your screen again, that's. All right, I'm back there. Huh. And it doesn't let you move that. Now, now try to move it now that you're not in slide. Uh, yeah, no luck, my nothing? friend. Nothing. All right. It's well. probably, I'm using, I'm using Linux. So maybe that's okay. my problem. Well, yeah. I just thought I'd mention it and see if we could move it. If not, that's fine. You can talk us through it. So sorry to interrupt. It. You're good. We're still friends. <laughs> it's all good. All right. Let's see. Um, I'll put, I'll give you a copy of the slideshow. You can append it to your post or awesome. whatever. If anybody really wants to take and a look at it. We can see most of it, but there's just a few words that are cut off like you can see. So. Okay, great. I'll read it. I'll read it to you. So you know what it says. Okay. So um, again, back to return a report, um, because individuals can look at the minutes and see what their assignments were, um, they will do an internal accounting. Did I complete this assignment? Um, if I did, now I need to make a report about it during our meeting, because reporting is part of um, your, your assignment is not complete in our church unless you've reported it. And so um, seeing your assignment in your minutes helps you to understand whether you've uh, completed your assignment and it takes some of the pressure off of leaders where leaders don't feel like they have to scold or harass or constantly remind um, other members of their committees or of their councils to fulfill their responsibilities because the minutes are doing that job for them. Um, like you just discussed in some detail, minutes help absent members catch up. Um, I think it, another key part of that is that minutes help new members integrate into your meeting. In, in BYC in particular, but also in ward council, we have um, frequent leadership changes. And so a new deacons quorum president or a new Laurel class president comes in and she doesn't have a clue about what she's walking into. If you can hand her a copy of the minutes before she attends class, she knows what you talked about at the last meeting. She has a sense of what might be talked about at the current meeting. And they feel more able to participate and offer their insight um, because, they're, because they have more information. They're prepared for the meeting. Um, again, like we mentioned earlier, meetings will, minutes will help you plan effective meeting agendas for the next meeting. Um, you can mark uh, items that have been tabled or sometimes people call it parking for the next meeting. Um, you can write down uh, assignment items that need to be followed up on. All of those things help you to plan a better meeting um, for your next follow-up meeting. And again, because of all these things, meetings help eliminate time suck. When you attend a meeting that's well run, that's well organized, that everyone can sort of stay on topic, um, you, your, your meetings are, are much more effective, a better use of time. So just, just to review very quickly, I didn't cover this at the beginning because I wanted you to look at a set of minutes and see what they're supposed to look like. Um, but just to, to make it clear what the difference between minutes and informal notes are, the minutes are an official record of a meeting. They're kept by the secretary. That could be the executive secretary, it could be a class secretary, um, but they're kept by the secretary. They include administrative information like the, num the names of attendees, the time that your meeting began and ended, assignments, that sort of information. And they record all assignments and decisions. Um, if something was tabled, it's recorded. If you decided to, uh, to issue a calling or to submit a name for a calling, um, that's recorded in your minutes. If you decide to, uh, to organize an activity or make an assignment for an activity, that's recorded. If you accept an assignment um, or if you make an assignment to uh, bring something to the next activity, that's recorded in your minutes. But minutes do not record discussion. Um, minutes are not intended for, uh, for personal use. Now, informal notes are private. They are intended for personal use. That's the kind of note that you're familiar with taking. Um, they're recorded by everybody who attends the meeting and they record personal assignments like I sitting in ward council I'm not recording the assignments for the elders quorum president. I don't care what his assignments are I only want the assignments for the young women's president. Those are informal notes um, But if I were the executive secretary, 
I'm recording the notes for the elders quorum presidency. I'm recording the notes for the missionaries. I'm recording the assignments for, um, for every person who attends the meeting. So that's the, that's the difference between informal notes and minutes. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, I love that clarification because it can be, it, you know, someone may say something and think, oh, that, that's a really good point, or I need to remember that, or, right, and you just leave that up to everybody else's informal notes or, or your personal informal notes to record that. But as far as the minutes, it's very clear, you know, that, that's a different purpose. That's right. And so, like I said, for me, um, I take up and I take very detailed notes during meetings, and then when I type up the minutes, I eliminate any part of my personal notes that are personal, <laughs> right? That include that discussion stuff. And I just include the administrative part of it, type that up and then submit that to all meeting attendees. Now in my case, um, I try to get those out within 24 hours because a lot of times um, I find that if I do it later, I can't always remember uh, all of the details from the meeting. Um, and, but certainly, if you are acting as a secretary, you need to make sure that everyone, gets a, everyone who attended the meeting gets a copy of the minutes before the next meeting, um, ideally 24, 48 hours, because they may look at it and be like, oh, no, I forgot an assignment. I need to just complete that assignment. And, uh, and that'll give them a little bit of time to, to work on that. So you send them, you know, 24 hours, within 24 hours after the meeting, and then a few days, okay. you send them again a few days before the next meeting. That's right. Within 24 hours, I submit them to whoever was presiding at the meeting for approval. Hmm. And once those meetings, once those minutes are approved by whoever um, was presiding, if it's the bishop or whatever, um, then I send them out to the meeting attendees. Now, in the case of BYC, I don't send them out to the youth. Um, I give them a physical copy of that before the next meeting because we don't often, um, I just give it to their leaders. Mm -hmm. um, just because youth, you know, confidentiality, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but for adults, I would handle that a little differently. So I would imagine before the next meeting, you're also sending out the, the, the upcoming agenda for that meeting. And so are they one and the same when you send the meetings out that way? That's or right. For me, no, they are not. The minutes are separate from the agenda. The agenda is the, is the sort of outline of what you're hoping to accomplish during the next meeting. Gotcha. I've done it both ways where I've integrated minutes into um, agendas. Usually I have the, the minutes in a column on the right-hand side, and I have the agenda in a column on the left-hand side um, so that you can see, hey, this was what we covered last time, and it'll inform what we're going to talk about this time. Mm -hmm. um, but normally, uh, we keep the agenda separate. For BYC, the agenda looks the same at every meeting. In our case, we have a, we have a, we call it the 90 minutes state of the quorum or state of the class report, 90 seconds, sorry. Mm -hmm. And each class president takes 90 seconds and reports on the state of their class or quorum at the beginning. And based on what they say, um, we just let the kids talk. We, adult leaders do not talk during that time. Based on what they say, the minute taker, who is me, I'll write down the names of the kids that they've discussed. I'll write down the activities that they felt were good or bad. And we'll discuss those in some detail later as a group. You know, what's, what's a need that we can um, meet with this particular youth? Or um, can we invite them to an activity? You know, whatever, whatever the assignment is, we'll discuss that in some detail later. And then we'll spend a portion of time planning our combined activities. So for that meeting, the agenda is always the same. For ward council, I have not ever written an agenda for ward council, which is why our ward council meetings are a nightmare. No, <laughs> we, I think that, that um, ward council agenda, you would need to talk to your bishop and determine what are the important things this month, because the ward council agenda is going to be flexible every month. You might be talking about missionary um, efforts in detail one month. You might not need to talk about that missionary as much than the following month. Um, you might have needs that relate to uh, the, Sunday, the new Sunday school training, might be a curriculum issue. You might have received leadership from the stake that you need to discuss in your ward council meeting. Um, so ward council agendas are a little more flexible, but it takes a little bit of planning between the executive secretary and the bishopric to, to make those decisions about what those agenda items look like. And the minutes again are separate from that. Now I will tell you one thing, when you're planning an agenda, it's key to set aside a set amount of time for each discussion item. For example, 
If you're going to talk about missionary work, we're going to talk about missionary work for five to seven minutes. If you're going to talk about um, your upcoming activity that you're concerned about, we're going to spend three to five minutes on that topic. So record that in your agenda so that everybody knows how long we're supposed to be spending on this topic so you don't get off track and talk too much. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah and that leads me to another question I had is that, you know, I'm just thinking there's always the scenario will, where somebody will sort of throw a curveball in the meeting or bring up a topic or ask a question, say, hey, I wanted to ask you about this, right? And it's not on the agenda. They didn't send it in earlier. Um, is that, how does that, that work as far as, is it the, you know, an award council, is it the bishop's role to sort of uh, dismiss that or, or say, hey, that's not on the agenda? Is it the, the clerk or secretary's role, whoever's taking minutes or the agenda to, how, what, what guidance would you give to really stay on, on, on focus of the, of the agenda that's been prepared? For when I have acted as secretary, I, um, I would, uh, I would be the timekeeper. I would say, hey, we're, you know, we've got a couple of minutes to talk about this or we've run out of time. Let's tape, this is obviously something that's important. Let's table it. Um, another thing that the secretary does is as a discussion continues, the, dis the secretary ensures that a decision was made. So there's a, something to record, right? Yeah. Um, I find in a lot of meetings, we talk and talk and talk, but a decision isn't made and we move on to a new topic. Yeah, great point, um, yeah. So record that. Um, Regarding your earlier question, I would say that the presiding individual needs to say, let's put this at the end, right? We have some items on our agenda right now. I, your topic is important. If we've got time at the end, we'll handle it at the end. If we, if we run out of time at the end of our meeting, then let's table it for the next meeting because, because I feel like this is an important topic. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I would always put primacy on the fact that we're, we're an organized group, right? Um, that we want to stay organized, but that we also want to be flexible, that if something comes up, then we want to be able to discuss it. We need the flexibility to discuss it, but let's put it at the end after we've discovered our, after we've covered our half twos for this meeting. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. And I think this is sort of, you know, a little off topic of, uh, of, of what, what you're going over here, but I'm, I think that's I, a great point that you said is really empower that secretary, whomever it is that's keeping the minutes to, to remind us when we've just talked, talked and talked to, to raise your hand and say, so what, what's the action item here? What, what's the point? Why, what, what conclusion do we get at? Right. Um, I think that's, it's very good. And then, um, you know, you said that each item should have a time limit and, and that, you know, it's sort of the, the presiding authority's job to keep us moving and keep us on, on track. But I, I kind of, I feel like being a Bishop, you're also, cursed with this ability to be very verbose and uh you just <laughs> talking and so even the bishop you know the, the secretary may think man we, we have five to seven minutes on the agenda here and the bishop's going on 15 and um you know it, 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 in your experience have you seen the secretary say something at that point or is it uh, i have and i've been the person that says it <laughs> nice um it's it's kind of tricky i think um the first few times that you do it um it can feel a little bit awkward, um, but as people become accustomed to the fact that we have time, you know, we have, we're trying to be respectful of everybody's time, that people learn how to get to the point quickly or faster. Um, now, again, these are ward council meetings and sometimes inspiration will hit and the bishop will need to pontificate um, and that's okay too. Um, as a secretary, you're gonna need to use some judgment in those cases but it is always okay to say, you know, we're, we've spent a lot of time on this topic. Is there something you want to push off from our agenda, right? Is there something you want to eliminate? Um, always prioritize your items so that the items that can be eliminated or tabled for the next meeting can be pushed at the end of your agenda. But, but do, as a secretary, do try to, um, to stop people when they're running over. And I've had secretaries when I was Relief Society president, that was my secretary's job was to cut me off at the one hour mark. <laughs> yeah. I told her, I said, I don't care if we're in the middle of a sentence, stop me <laughs> because we have other things that we need to do. Yeah. And it's important to communicate that to the secretary, the secretary, not just assume that, Oh yeah, they'll, they'll stop me. Like give them say, listen, I talk a lot or I get, I get distracted. Right. Please let us know if, if we've passed this marker or, or if we're hitting that hour mark or whatever it is. So. That's right. And the secretary is the, the key to administration in the church. 
Um, you know, having served as a secretary a couple of times, I'm glad we're segueing into this um, next slide, that a lot of times leaders don't have an, any idea what to do with their secretary. Um, we don't know how to use them um, beyond having them take the role. So according to the set handbook, the secretary's work is to work with the president to make an agenda for a meeting, to take notes at meetings, and to track assignments. Now, all of those things are accomplished by writing minutes and by keeping agendas. So your secretary's responsibility is to write the agenda for your meeting. Let me repeat that. <laughs> your secretary's responsibility is to, take the, is to make the, help you write the agenda for your meeting. Um, I can't tell you how many times as a Relief Society president, I just thought it was easier for me to just write the agenda um, than to work with my secretary. When I did that, um, my meetings were less effective because um, now that I'm the young women's president, I work really closely with my secretary to do that. She remembers things that I've forgotten. Um, she helps me consider how long a discussion is going to take if I put too many things on the agenda, which I'm inclined to do. Um, and she organizes it and does the typing so that I'm freed up to do the ministering part of my calling. I can't do all of the administration and all of the ministering. Mm. Um, that's why we have secretaries is to help us with those administrative responsibilities. So and use I, I just want to clarify that, you know, you say secretary, but um, I think in a bishopric, I mean, I guess it's the bishop's call if that's, if he wants to throw this responsibility at the clerk, right. Or the, the executive secretary, I think, I was always in the under impression that the clerk is assigned to do minutes in ward council, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. The clerk, um, I am not sure exactly how that role works with a clerk. In a typical presidency, you just have a secretary, right? Mm -hmm. um, so a clerk, if the clerk is taking the minutes, then the minutes are turned over to the secretary to work with the bishop to make the agenda, gotcha. right? Yeah. So then it's a three-way, yeah. you know what I mean? It's a three-way um, communication issue. Then they're all working together. Yes. Awesome. Sorry for interrupting. Keep going. <laughs> no, you're good. Cause, that, Cause that's something I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, now let's see, we talked about sending things out quickly, but, but I will, like I said, don't take away your secretary's responsibility by assuming the, assuming taking notes and um, taking agendas on for yourself. Um, now also you should be using minutes and agendas during all of your meetings, it does, even BYC. I read in the Desert News just a little bit ago that the church is emphasizing the use of agendas in the new young men's program for boys over age 14. So we can start right now to train our youth to be effective, efficient leaders who know how to make assignments and to follow through. In other words, we're going to teach our youth how to return and report even before they've attended the temple. So this is a um, this is a quote that I read from an Enzyme article. I'm just going to read it here. I know that's tacky, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Let's hear it. I'm interested. When a task has been delegated, the leader often assumes that he can sit back and let the work get done. But in fact, the work is not going to get done as it should unless he has a consistent program of follow through. This includes taking time periodically to examine what has been done, assess the outcome, do some replanning, and perhaps give some additional training and coaching. Follow through does not mean always checking up, but rather having times mutually agreed upon to review progress. For example, if a teacher's quorum committee under the direction of a chairman has been delegated the responsibility for a quorum skating party and food afterwards, the quorum advisor should first give clear instructions and then set dates when certain arrangements should be completed and reported to him. He should not wait until the day of the party and then frantically call everyone to see if all the arrangements have been made. <laughs> I've been there, Jenny. Yeah, <laughs> done that. <laughs> Many programs fail because there is no planned method for stimulating or redirecting people with assignments. Also, a lack of follow through may be a signal to the person given the task that the leader has lost interest in the project or is no longer concerned. This may cause the assigned person to lose motivation. I think we've seen this many times in our assignments in the church. Yeah. And minutes and agendas are key parts of that. When you write in your minutes, you document it, write it down. Um, in one week, so-and-so is going to report on um, whether he called the skating rink to, to make reservations, to buy our group ticket. 
Um, all of that's recorded in the minutes, so you can say organized um, and then follow through with the follow through with your youth because that's what we're training them is to return a report. This is the same on the ward council level, right? In one week, I'm going to call back and let you know that I went to visit sister so-and-so and here's what at the hospital and here's the report on her progress. Here's what her needs are. Um, all of those things are recorded in minutes. Yeah, I love that. And, and really, you know, we talked about on leading LDS, this concept of, of really giving autonomy to, to those you lead and letting go. And, and even if they, you know, make mistakes, you know, let them, let them falter a little bit. You don't have to swoop in and save them on everything. But sometimes there's sort of that balance of like, well, so do I just like give them an assignment, cross my fingers and hope that it works out or, or yeah, it might be a disaster, but they'll learn from it. Right. And I think that what you read there just gives a, a model for leaders to use that, that, yeah, you don't have to call them every day or, or pester them leading up to the, the event, but just have a set time that everybody knows this is the time that we do follow up. You know, how's that going? We talked about this last time. What's your report, right? I think that's such a, a powerful leadership principle. Yeah, I, I have found myself, you know, I deal with the youth and so they're all learning, um, even, just like adults are too, but especially with the youth. Um, that, that if I uh, assume that when I approach them, that I don't remind that I offer support. So when I approach a youth who has a, who has a responsibility for mutual activity, I may text them on Tuesday night and say, Hey, is there anything I can help you with? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As opposed to, Hey, just don't forget that you've got an assignment. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to insult yeah. them. Right. Yeah, yeah. And you don't mean to, but it, exactly. Just, yeah. Right. That's not what I'm trying to do. Even though I may think that they probably forgot. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I just want to make sure that I can support them and offer some help. And if they don't need any help, great. Right. Yeah. But that will remind them in their own mind and they'll take care of the situation. Do you see? And so yeah. it's a way for me to be supportive and help them complete their assignments without me doing it for them, making the assumption that they're not doing it either. I yeah. found that works for me. That's great. Um, so anyway, now that you know how to take minutes and why, you're going to start holding better meetings that aren't a time suck. You'll be the hero that saves the meetings. But don't yeah. worry. I know you won't let it go to your head, <laughs> but you can take great meeting, great, great notes. But um, these things are key um, parts of the administrative portion of, of, uh, of our callings. I think for me, I found that when the administrative ducks are in a row that I am freed up to minister. And that to me is what the gospel is about, is the ministering part. When I can get my self-organized so that the administrative parts um, just sort of operate, then I'm free to do the ministering part that is the part that is like our Savior Jesus Christ, and that's the part that I'm in for. Yeah, you know, that's such a, a great principle to, to end with is that, you know, it's, it's easy to get caught up in these administrative things. And, and I remember my time as an elders quorum president, just spending hours upon hours in the clerk's office, organizing home teaching lists, you know, and, and I just missed the point. I was a young leader, didn't get it. And, and the reason we really try and improve our skills in these administering areas is so we can be better ministers and have more time to do that minist administration, which is a lot more fun than uh, <laughs> sitting in meetings, right? <laughs> Could not agree more. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, Jenny, this has been great. Let's, uh, if it's all right, I want to go through some, uh, there's a few questions that came in. Um, Sharon asked, uh, talk about how to use this in the new format for Release Society, High Priest Group, Elders Quorum, if you could. I think she, what she's referring to is the, um, is it every first Sunday in the coming year, the, there's, we're encouraged to have sort of a council type meeting uh, in, in that third hour, right? And so, maybe this is what a great opportunity to use this skill of taking minutes um, during that meeting. Any, any further thoughts on that other than just handle it like a council meeting? Yeah, I would handle it just like any council meeting. I think these are, I think that's what this new program is supposed to do. I'm really excited about it. I would love to be in relief society right now while these changes are happening, but I'm not, I'm in young yeah. women's, which is also great. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, you have your secretary in those meetings, taking notes, recording the assignments. And then again, the secretary's role is to make sure that we have a return and report time frame, right? I'm going to do this, say that um, your, your Relief Society determines that sister so-and-so needs a visit and we want to check and see if maybe she needs help with her yard. 
Um, so who's going to who's going to complete that assignment? When are they going to complete it? And when are they going to report it? Right? All of those things are recorded in your minutes, um, so that so that you can be 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 effective. And then you can bring those minutes back to your next meeting and follow up. You can choose whether you want to hand it out to everybody and and see if everybody wants to follow up or as a leader you may follow up with that individual um, privately. Um, there are a couple ways you could handle that but but just make sure that you're teaching that return and report part of it that that we don't that our assignments are not just going out into the ether that we actually intend for for them to be completed and reported. Awesome and and I just think about how powerful these these third hour lessons can be when you do have somebody that's taking minutes and that when you do meet again, you're, you're following up on those assignments they're giving. And just in that setting of giving assignments, you know, in a relief society or high priest group and, and uh, hearing back, Oh, this is what I did. Like that builds such unity and purpose in that meeting, which, uh, which will be made uh, more likely if you're taking effective minutes. So I love that. Um, You'll see more involvement when you hear peers um, accepting assignments and completing them, then it becomes, this is what we do, right? This is right. what the Relief Society does. We go out and fulfill responsibilities, come back and make a difference in people's lives. And it will matter much more when people see other members of the group completing those assignments than when they just see the Relief Society president doing them. Yeah, I love that. It's gonna be, be a powerful uh, adjustment. Uh, Diana says, are all Relief Society presidency and ward council meetings always one hour? Because it seems like there isn't enough time to discuss everything needed to talk about. What do you think, Jenny? No, our, um, our typical ward council meeting goes two hours. We meet just once a month, though. Now, <laughs> before this, we were meeting two hours twice a month, and it was awful. <laughs> yeah. Because we had so much time, right? Yeah. We, we got off track and, and didn't stay focused. Um, I, I prefer to run a one hour meeting myself. Um, my young women's presidency meetings often go longer, usually about two an hour and a half. Again, we meet once a month. Um, I, for me, one hour is the golden standard. If everybody were on track all the time, um, then we could keep our, we could keep our meetings to one hour, but I find, especially in women's organizations, even more than <laughs> in the ward council, we chat, we talk, we visit, we need that time to, to visit and talk. Um, when I was Relief Society president, we met for strictly one hour, but we met weekly. Um, so it, yeah. it kind of, I think there's some flexibility there with your president, but, but to me, I know you are a believer in the one hour meeting as well. Yes. Yeah. And, and I, I live and die by that. And I really think Rarely is there a meeting that needs to go over an hour. I, I see, and, and for the record, Jenny said it, all right, as far as women's meetings and going. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, the point being that is you've got to have a boundary, right? And we, we talk about this in the church. It's an it's a eternal principle that, you know, restrictions and boundaries create efficiency, right? Or they make, that's why we have restrictions in, in the laws and commandments that we have is they make us better individuals. And so, sure, there may be a lot to talk about, but I think, obviously what you've talked about here today, Jenny, that is let's, regardless of how long you take one, you've, you need to have some type of restriction and, and that presiding authority or whoever's putting the agenda needs to say, this meeting is going to go for an hour or maybe 90 minutes or whatever it is, but have that in place so that everybody's in that mind state, mind frame. But the other thing is by having these tools, having somebody effectively taking minutes, there's less of that time suck. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and so there's a lot to talk about, but maybe if we organize this better, we can talk about more in less time. And that's, uh, I think everybody wants that. It takes a little planning ahead of time. Like I mentioned before, I tend to put a lot of information on my agendas. Um, and so when I work with my secretary, um, she's better able to say, Jenny, you know, you don't need 25 items on your agenda. Which of these things are important? Which of these things could we write on a piece of paper that are just informational and pass out, right? Which yeah. can we handle but in our group text, right? Um, our ward council has just started a Slack channel. I know you're big on um, that sort of thing. Yeah. That has helped some of our, um, our communication issues where, where we're just talking about information where things that don't require a dis an actual discussion. Yeah, and it doesn't. You don't need to talk about who's bringing the brownies to the barbecue in ward council. That can those kind of details can be passed and 
back and forth through these, these other apps that we've talked about outside the meeting, um, which again, gives you more time to talk about what's important. Uh, let's go through some of these other, got a lot of uh, comments on uh, Facebook here. I'll just read through some of them. And Jenny, if you have any thoughts or uh, please feel free to, to speak up. Is there some type of bullet point or spreadsheet breakdown to streamline the process so I can share within my ward? Uh, I missed the beginning, so you might have to send a file already. Sorry, and thank you for in advance. Yeah, so obviously this recording will be made available to rewatch. Um, but, uh, but, and that's maybe a question I was going to ask you is, you know, going back to the agenda you showed, what are the basic building blocks of, or sorry, the minutes that you showed? There's a difference. What are the basic building blocks of, of keeping minutes? You have you know, the time, the, you know, who, the, the hymn that was sung, who's there. And then it, are there any guidance about how to build up a, a basic ma uh, minutes for the meeting? Well, I can show you what are, what are recorded in official minutes. I'll just go back to that page. How's that? Yeah, let's do that. Um, the uh, minutes, minutes always record the the administrative minutia right the the purpose of minutes is administrative minutia <laughs> and so um so for minutes you always record who's presiding what time the meeting began what time it ends who's conducting um, any leadership training that occurred the song opening prayer that sort of thing because all of those things are going to help you prepare for your next meeting right not only will they remind you what was covered in the last meeting, but it will help you prepare for your next meeting. Okay. You might look at it and be like, holy Hannah, this was a two hour BYC. It was planned to be two hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because like I told you, we had that committee meeting, but you might look at it and be like, oh my gosh, we are, our meetings, our time suck, right? Let's do better this time. Okay. We're going to make sure that our next meeting stays in our one hour mark. Right. Yeah. Um, it also contains a list of meeting attendees. Those are the, those are the, the sort of main things that occur in minutes. And then the other thing to remember about minutes. Now I organize things by heading because I, for me, it's easy to organize in ward counts in the BYC that we're for our three purposes, which are meeting needs, planning upcoming activities and evaluating past activities. So I group all assignments um, under one of those three categories. Um, but minutes are a record of the decisions and the actions that a committee takes or, or a council takes. So as far as bullet points, what you need is this is the assignments that we made. These are the items that were tabled for next time. Those are the, those are the two main headers for any meeting for minutes, I would say. Yeah. It's really pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. When in doubt, I mean, just put, you know, the basic uh, information about the meeting and then, as far as like the conducting the song, you know, who is there. And then it really, it's just a, 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 a record of what assignments were made last time that we need to follow up and what assignments are made this time. Right. If you do that much, you're, you're leaps and bounds ahead of 90% uh, of the other organizations out there. Right. Yeah. 90% may be a conservative estimate. Yeah. Yes, that's right. I'm being kind. I'm being kind. Uh, David DeFord has a great uh, question. He says, in business, I love timed agendas. Do you feel that they inhibit open discussion in church executive meetings? What do you think, Jenny? Um, I have not found that. We only, <laughs> I have not been able to convert our bishop to the timed um, <laughs> ward council, um, but we do use it in BYC. And um, we have found I can tell you one time we actually started to end early. <laughs> wow. We were, we were finished. Our BYC only lasted about 45 minutes and I was acting as secretary. And I said, um, you know, brother so-and-so who was leading the meeting, um, we have seven minutes left. What would you like to talk about? Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. so because we had, because we stayed with our, within our time limits, we had extra time at the end to do free form discussion. So I would say that, that setting a set time improves the quality of discussion and then two gives you more time for free form discussion. If, as long as you're staying within your time limits on your earlier agenda items, does that make sense? Your, yeah. your have tos. Yeah. And, and this is, you know, I've talked a lot about this on leading LDS, especially since I've you know, shared my opinion that there's rarely a meeting that needs to go longer than an hour. And people think, Oh, what about the spirit? Like, what if, what if there's needs to be more time? You need to just follow the spirit. It's not about time frames. Well, we're, we've been told to, to only do, uh, 
you know, an hour and 10 minutes for SACRA meeting and nobody's ever thought, well, you know, obviously some meetings run over and you have that call, but majority of meetings of SACRA meeting just go to that hour and 10 minutes and we all expect it. We all go home and nobody thinks, man, I wish that meeting went longer. Right. And so again, just having those, uh, those, having a, a time frame is going to help everybody stay focused and hopefully create more discussion. But anyways, um, well, cool. We'll, we'll wrap this up here. Let's say uh, I know, uh, Naomi says, I know this says stake and ward council, but I learned some things too. Awesome. Rosa, Rosalia Ulibarra says, this is awesome. Very cool. Um, and as we wrap up in the comments, share some love with Jenny about how much you've appreciated this. Um, this is uh, really, really good and, and good practical guidance and tips that, that we all need to consider and, uh, and do so. Uh, and any final words, Jenny? I think I think we've said it all. Anything else before we sign off? No, I mean, um, I guess I, I would caution you to not judge people who haven't got this information that you've got. <laughs> um, I think um, that it's that sometimes uh, I know I attend these meetings and I just want to roll my eyes, pull my hair out because they're making me insane <laughs> with their yeah. lack of organization. Um, so that's something for me I have to work on to to recognize that not everyone has the understanding I do about how, how things should run um, and be kind to others about that, but, mm. but find ways to, um, to help people organize the administrative parts. Because again, like I said, when, when our administrative clockwork is running like clockwork, then we're freed to minister. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, again, as a, the plug I, I give here is if you've seen any value, if you've received any value from this discussion, I encourage you to go to leadinglds.org, hit the donate button and become a core leader, which is a monthly or yearly subscribing leader that uh, is on a set it and forget it uh, program with helping us. And that way we don't have to chase you down every month or beg you every month, but you can just join in with the, the mission and effort that we're striving to do at Leading LDS to enhance leadership ability and capacity uh, in the LDS context. And I think that has been done today. I know my ability, um, you know, we just had our leading LDS uh, board meeting. We're required to have a, a board meeting every uh, quarter and uh, I sort of take minutes, but uh, I, I've realized that I've completely failed, but uh, I'm, I'm repenting and we'll get back on it. So uh, we'll end it there, Jenny. I appreciate your time and I encourage this will be available at uh, on Facebook and leading LDS.org for at least 24 hours or so. Um, and then it'll be put in our core leader library and, and all the core leaders will have uh, unlimited access to it. So as always, be a leader, not a calling. See ya. <laughs>